What you are listening to is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in the squared circle. Both parties have agreed to dismiss their cases and have their disputes settled here in our forum, The Turnbuckle Debate. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Turnbuckle Debate. My name is Sneed. I'm Chad. I'm Tom, the OG Fig Kid, the staple of the Turnbuckle Debate. And we have joining us finally our longtime buddy, longtime friend, Freems from twitch.tv slash Freems. What's going on, man? Oh, not much. I'm glad to, we've talked about this for a while, so I'm glad it's to been, finally be on. This has been, ye- we've talked about this for years. Years, even before yeah. we started before doing it, we, yeah. we've been talking about it. Freems. Tell everybody about your channel on Twitch. Uh, yeah, I run a, I guess some would call a political stream. We do debates over there. I also talk a lot about like music history when it comes to punk rock, stuff like that. So That's we have awesome. a good time over there. Lots of memes. So. Lots of memes. Lots of uh, foul humor, I imagine. If I We, call, we like to call it blue collar humor. <laughs> <laughs> blue collar <laughs> humor. Yeah. yeah. That's my kind of humor, man. We have to oh, tone. Yeah. We have to tone ourselves down due to the Man. the state of the world. I don't think they could handle <laughs> our humor. I believe it. I've, I've, <laughs> I've indulged <laughs> with you guys before, so <laughs> so yeah, yeah. We got some topics. Yeah, glad to have you on the debate. We got some topics to get into. I think we all know the format. Yeah, you guys want to get into it? Let's jump in, man. All right, let's start it. Our first topic of the evening. <laughs> what? <laughs> What is the worst part about WWE right now? And can it be fixed? Ooh, Ooh. sure. It could be fixed, but there's a lot to fix. Can, man, can it be fixed? It can be fixed, but it won't be, but it won't won't be. be. That's That's a good point. That's yeah. Can we say everything? Can you say, can can everything be an answer? If you had to pick Uh, one though, Snee, like I've heard you bitch about a shit ton of things. If you had one thing to fix, what would be the one thing you would fix that you think sucks <clears throat> about WWE right now? Well, the one the the main thing that I would fix would be the overproduction. I would fix the overproduction that they do. Like I, the the promos, the the shots, the way that they shoot everything, it doesn't seem real. And that's what I love about wrestling. It, uh, in the old days it seemed it was real and like now you don't have that with them they have the um everything so cookie cutter with them hey it makes you feel sick watching their their camera work zooming in and out when somebody's getting punched in the head and i don't like that either what the hell is that the camera work is atrocious yeah camera work's awful but like and, and giving uh creative freedom to the wrestlers to be themselves i feel like we're relegated to the writers that we have and if it's not good from them the talent can't be talent yeah you gotta feel it the talent i agree the talent has to have some input into their character they have to that's what makes it a real character yeah it's not a tv show it shouldn't be a written script it it can be fixed but you (laughs) just you just listed off overproduction camera shots like i mean we could just sit here and list things but like if you only had one like what was the one? If you had to hone in on one thing that you think would instantly make it better, get okay. this man out. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. Uh, I feel like we're not far from that happening, anyways. He's getting up there, but it's gonna be a yeah. sad day. We'll all be sad, <clears throat> but like, no, I actually won't. don't have a problem with the production. Like we've still seen like bright spots in the WWE, even with the production, and still see it being exciting and stuff in its moments. Um, this might be like the Twitch political streamer coming out of me here, but like, I feel like they got to get away from like the like corporate interest of like, everything is so washed and sanitized to where it's taken any amount of heart out of wrestling. I think that's why like AEW and a lot of the indie promotions are resonating so much with people now, especially wrestling fans, because that heart is there. Like it just, it's not overly washed. Dude, that's, that's a very astute point 
Yeah. Because that is that is so true, man. When yeah. you really boil it down, like corporate interest, all the money that is being pumped into that fucking company makes them sanitize their products so much. And you're you're I mean, you're hitting it on the head. And that covers a lot of it because like when you do see like a GCW or man, there's heart there. Those wrestlers, like it, it yeah, it's rough around the edges. Maybe they fuck shots up, maybe things don't always go as planned. But it feels like it has that, take it back to, you know, talking about you kind of discussing the history of punk rock. Those companies have that punk rock vibe. Yeah. WWE has like Chicago 1978 vibe, this overproduced yeah. band, you know, like yeah. it doesn't feel like there's balls to I mean, it. Could you, pick, could you picture like the Young Bucks? Like going on YouTube and like being chilling to like China, like John Cena, like being chilling, like speaking Mandarin <laughs> on YouTube, like no way, like right. maybe maybe as a meme, but like like it's just so like we can't we can't hurt anybody, we can't not just that. I'm not being like oh they're too social justice because I don't mean that either, but they're just tone deaf. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I I think mine. If I had to pick one thing it probably falls under what you're talking about Freeman with just like everything being kind of sanitized and the soul of everything being taken out of it. But if I had to pick one thing and I hate the fucking camera work in WWE, so that would be a big one for me, but even bigger than that is the fucking promos. Yeah. The promos are absolute <clears throat> garbage. Eliminate the writer room, get yeah. rid of it, get rid of the writers, let these wrestlers come up with their own shit let them go out on live tv give them the opportunity to hit a home run or fall flat on their face the like, talent can't be talent That's i feel like like a, yeah like a like a show like snl back in the day one of the things that made snl like extremely interesting was like it was it was live and they could break character and laugh things could go wrong that is missing out of Raw and SmackDown. Like those are live shows. The live element, they've overproduced it so much that the live aspect of it, you don't even feel that it's live anymore. There's not that, there's not that feeling of like, ooh, they could say the wrong thing here. They or they could freeze up, or the crowd could <clears> just, <throat> you, you know, the, they could get hit with a watch chant and freeze up and fuck their promo up. There's an aspect of that that makes it exciting, and that is completely gone. And you've got these canned promos that are just soulless, boring. They don't sound authentic. They don't sound genuine. So I, I would do away with the writers immediately. How do you feel about the like the rises to the top when you have guys who could cut their own promos? You see who the stars are. Let them yep. develop it on their own. Yeah. Can you imagine if MJF was handed scripts every week. Oh God. Mm -mm. Could you imagine MJF in WWE cutting a pro? I mean, no. un unwatchable. He would, be, he would be fired from the WWE, WWE for the stuff he does off off air. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. For it. All the stuff on Twitter when he's like telling me, yeah. fuck you, all the shit <laughs> he says on Twitter, he would be fired instantly. My, fa I saw somebody got a figure signed by him at a convention and it just said, suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. which is awesome <laughs> yeah what were you gonna ask frames how do you feel about like the the um like uh like quiz off stuff they've been doing and like with the i can't even i can't even tell you the name of the tag team otis and alpha academy alpha academy like just overdoing stuff like <clears throat> that too like in that same episode they had like the weird like they had the Miz show and then they had uh I love the Miz. Um, and then the Alpha Academy thing, like it's just too much bullshit going on in between the matches, too. And you know what's funny about that to me is like it's not like that's new. They had fucking, I mean, it goes all the way back to Piper's Pit, the funeral parlor. Yeah, it goes back to like the attitude era with with Stone Cold and and Kurt Angle putting the little hats on and playing the shit and singing and and the milk truck and and the Zamboni they've had stuff like that but it goes back to what you said frames there's no soul so these yeah. segments seem like they were written by a couple fucking nerds in the back and they weren't like 
the, the talent is the talent is being presented this shit and being forced to do it. Whereas I feel like the talent had a little more hand in it back in the day and it felt more genuine. And we got a lot of iconic moments for that too. Like the people's elbow came from like the rock trying to make the undertaker laugh, like right. shit like that. Like, uh, I mean, anything the rock did, any of his promos or anything he did in stone cold, Austin three sixteen. no one knew he was going to say that. He didn't even know he was going to say that. Like, right. Just iconic. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and <clears throat> they were like Sneed said, you know, let the talent be talented. They, they were given a, a, a certain amount of rope to go out and do their own thing. And maybe they would end up hanging themselves with that rope, but they were given the opportunity to do it. And today, man, well, no one's going off script anymore. No, everybody's afraid to go off script because they're afraid they're going to go get in the back and get yelled at. Right? Even That's, stuff like, like that is iconic though. I'm like looking back and thinking of like the Scott Steiner math and like yeah. Sid Vicious promos and Ultimate Warrior promos. Like. Right, right. It's almost like the mistake made it become legend. Like it was a fuck yeah. up at the time, but it's became legend within wrestling. Tom, you never, what do you think? Tom, like what, what would be the one thing you would eliminate? Well, the one thing I'll say before we get to that, as much as, as horrible as the Alpha Academy stuff is, at least you could see Chad Gable is doing everything he can to try and make it entertaining. Yeah. Like yeah. out of the door crap that it is, he, he is becoming a star out of it. And hopefully he can separate himself from that. He but is Steiner showing reminds me of, He reminds me of a Kurt Angle. He does. Back in the day. That's the worst thing going on in the show. I was just using it as an example and I, just to get back into that real quick, there was like three or four different segments like that, though, throughout the whole episode. Too much ha like uh -huh. In the same episode, it was like that. You had the RK Broga party, like, yeah, uh, or RK Toga, whatever they called it. Like, I don't know. Just stuff I just don't care about. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I, I'm going to say the repetitiveness, seeing rematch after rematch. Like, you could watch Raw three weeks in a row and see 80% of the same matches all three weeks. Who wants to watch the same stuff week after week? Right, give us variety. Yeah, man, you you have you had a roster with a lot more people on it, and now you still have a roster with a lot of people that you could give us more variety. It doesn't have to be. Don't throw people in a, a five man gauntlet match. Have a couple of different matches. Like they're so afraid of having just a match for a match. Like it has to be tied into the feud somehow. Where I feel like that's what AEW does the best at is just giving us awesome matchups that don't necessarily play towards a storyline, but they do find little ways to make them count towards storyline, but then we'll yeah. get these awesome out of nowhere matchups. Well, that's, what's good about having the records, like having the records and the rankings. Like it's that it makes every match mean something. Right. Right. Uh, Brian Danielson had a bunch of random matches, but it all made a point. It was all part of his run and him wanting to beat heads in and, yeah, you know, it was just different yeah. matches every week, but it was part of a story. It didn't need to be him fighting the same person over and over and over. Yeah. And, you know, and here's another this is another point uh, to uh, Vince McMahon being gone. I don't think we're never going to have a talent get themselves over either. We're not going to have a talent that blows up like a stone cold or blows up like a rock. Like they, they're going to with the writers and the way that they do things. And it's so canned and so cookie cutter. No one's ever going to transcend that and become a bigger superstar. Well, even if someone starts to transcend that, they'll chop their fucking legs out from that's, under them. That's what, yeah. Vince does they not don't want that anymore. No. Yeah. So, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot that needs to be changed. There's a, I mean, there's not just one thing, I think, but I think yeah. until real Look quick. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Look at look at all the guys that are in the big picture too. They're almost all in their forties. These are all people that like made their mark back when there was more freedom. Like right. like Le Lesnar, except for Roman Reigns. Everyone not named Roman Reigns. Yeah, and the scary thing is, is like Roman's not a spring chicken anymore. I would say right. he's pro he's in his prime, but like, where's the underneath guys that they're building to kind of it shows in there's no one to feud that's credible there's no one to feud with roman roman's feuding with a guy who started in like 2001 2002 in lesnar like where elevate the matt riddles and if fuck it the funny thing uh, though like even if you look at riddle riddle's kind of old 
he's yeah. middle to late thirties. He got a late start in wrestling. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I guess the last thing I want to present before we move on to the next topic is you always hear everyone say, and we say it here too. Like, well, when Vince is gone, when Vince retires, which will never happen, but when Vince dies, things will change. Things will change. Will it? Like, are we just thinking, well, has he instated this system that even after he's gone, because it's not like we all grew up thinking when Vince is gone, Stephanie or Shane or Triple H would take over. I don't think that's the case anymore. Honestly, yeah. now when he's gone, is there going to be a WWE? Do they sell it? I think it's going to be fucking Disney, man. Yeah. Or, or NBC or some company is going to be running this. Jesus. If Disney buys it, we'll see Spider-Man in the main event. Martin <laughs> <Lord>. <laughs> <laughs> like Spider-Man I, versus Batman. I don't know why people like when people I've, you know, I, I kind of agreed earlier, but I really don't. Th- I think it gets worse when Vince is gone. Regardless, at least Vince is the buffer right now for like final say. Everything's kind of on him. Uh, whenever he, I don't think they'll be that person after that. Um, I think that's part of the reason they brought in uh, what's his name, Con Nick Con Nick Con. I feel like he is like the corporate guy for them. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 very very afraid. Of a WWE without McMahon, even are, though he, I, McMahon, I feel like he, he is definitely like ruining the company to an extent. I do, I do worry what's next after that. I guess sure he yeah. takes over when he's gone. I'm, I'm sure you all read the. Sorry, let me interrupt. I'm okay. sure you all read the dirt sheets, and yeah. uh, have you heard about The Rock possibly buying WWE with that buyer group? Yeah, I've heard about that. If he has any type of control, like they put him in charge of anything, it could be good. Because he knows what he's doing. I would be in for that. I would be more hopeful of that than Nick Khan. Yeah. What'd you say? What'd you say, Tom? The Rock would let people cut their own promos. He's not going to be handing him scripts. He's going to let guys develop on their own. He knows what it's about. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That might be the saving grace for the company. Yeah. 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 All right. You guys ready to move on to our next topic? Let's do it. All right, let's go. Our next topic, Frames, this is the one that you brought to the table. Hook in AEW, underrated or overrated? And we're going to let you take the reins on this to start it off. Oh, boy. We're getting some <laughs> contention here, I feel like. All right, listen. I'm a, I'm a, I am love AEW. Big AEW fan. I think it's the, the best thing that's been made in forever. But to me, Hook is proof. That if AEW wanted to, they could take a turd and put some pipe cleaner on it and some googly eyes and walk it down to the ring. And the fans will be like, whoa, this is so fucking groundbreaking. This is amazing. Like I look at message boards and be like, he has so much charisma. And I'm like, bitch, where? Where is it? I don't see any charisma. He, he walks with a dead stare out of the ring, like chewing imaginary bubble gum. He gets in there after he does a slam. But he like walks the same everywhere he goes. He looks like a like a, a CA like a create a wrestler on a video game. Like he, the only thing amazing about Hook is the fact that his hair can stay in that same position the whole time. He's like he's like the cure. He has like the cure hair where it's just perfectly misplaced. It's like organized chaos. You're in a sock head. before you go out to wrestle. <laughs> All right, well, we move on to the next topic. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Frames just buried the poor just kid. Fucking ended listen, that. listen, I don't think like he has no future or whatever, but like that idiot, that idiot chief, people are going to get tired of that pretty quick, I think. I think he is like, I, I do think he has a lot of, a lot of potential. I think he looks surprisingly good just in ring skills. Like, he he for what they're i mean they're giving him fucking squash matches essentially but like he's he looks talented he looks fit he's a good looking kid a lot of potential but (laughs) everyone's just like everyone's like that's taz's boy yeah yeah, (laughs) that's true (laughs) at least he's not dominic mysterio (laughs) dude (laughs) he's tiktok man yeah, he, he is TikTok. Yeah, he is was, Justin Bieber. That's gonna. He's that guy for that generation. I feel like the young. I'm so I'm blown away that people fucking love him like they do. Yeah, 
they love Aaron's... him because the, the memes existed before he was there. Yeah, like the, the send out hook meme. That's yeah. the send the send hook memes are there. That's why they love him. It's a meme that ended up like they had the meme. He came out there. He wasn't absolute shit. Like he was. He was. He's decent. He's a good wrestler. Right. Uh, but that's why people love him because it worked and it was like their meme. But like, come on. Like but he act like he's like the second coming of I don't I know. Think that's why he's, I think that's why he's there though. Because the Pete there's there's girl he's the in sync. He's the, the backstreet, but there's girls in the crowd now that don't watch wrestling. They're there for hook. That's there for hook. They're get getting that. the audience. I mean, yeah, wrestling and their their long history of uh you know, trying to win over the pop music crowd. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, this isn't WWE we're talking about. Like, this is like, I don't know. I just. So you're definitely saying overrated. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's a question on that one. I, think <laughs> what I do you don't think? get oh. it. I wouldn't be so frustrated if people didn't mark over him so fucking hard or pop for him so hard. It's like. It blows my mind how hard people pop for this guy. And I'm like, all he's doing is, I don't know. His like, fucking the, t-shirt was the number one selling shirt on Pro Wrestling Tees. Was it a plain white t-shirt? Yeah, it was <laughs> a plain yeah, white t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Look. Yeah. His, yeah that's, that's his charisma there coming through in the shirt. Like, <laughs> But honestly, is he supposed to have a ton of charisma? I don't think that's what his character is about at this point. His no, character is about being serious, coming down to the ring. You know, we, we haven't seen him in a real match. Like you said, we've seen him in a bunch of squash matches. And in those oh. matches, he's doing what he's supposed to do. I think they're I think they're hiding flaws. Yeah. Of course. Like they're yeah. not letting him talk. And and I think Frames is right about the kid doesn't have charisma and they're trying to hide that right now because he's what tw early 20s he's, and he's green as do shit he's yeah he's green and he can't get on a mic and cut this fucking passionate promo so they're like okay how can we hide that and, you and oh, you know? no go ahead man i'm used to live twitch this is podcast format you gotta like try not to interrupt no That's do it hard. no you're good uh, do it. Interrupt. so like the 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 style, if he was a bigger dude he could get away with like just walking to the ring all serious and shit like <laughs> but he's not <laughs> like <laughs> i've seen i've seen average dudes beat up guys that look like that like yeah he looks like a bieber man he looks yeah. like a bieber like that body type I mean, to me he, he looks like a guy who's coming to the ring in the zone he's he's still so young he's for his age, he's pretty damn good because if you compare him to Dominic Mysterio, like you said, oof, very true. That guy should but, not be on the main uh, roster of any company right now. Dominic imagine. Mysterio, he should be in the PC. That's where Dominic Mysterio belongs because Hook is, as of now, from the way they use him, they're smart. They're hiding what he can't do. They're showing off what he can do. And uh, he, he's, he's polishing himself up. And I'm kind of curious to see. Like right now, they only have him on Rampage. There's a reason he's not on Dynamite yet. He's the Rampage guy, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it, it's a it's a long story to tell with him and, and to see how he evolves over time. But um, it, it's way too soon for me to say whether he's over. I mean, I, right now, maybe he's overrated. I agree, but I wouldn't say he's underrated either. I just want to see how it plays out if he continues to evolve. With I think he's character. right where he needs to be. I disagree. I don't know. Like, when you listen to, like, the AEW fans just, like, collectively losing their shit over him, I'm like... All right, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> chill a little bit. Also, I want to say this because uh, I did compare him to Dominic Mysterio. If Dominic Mysterio had his body, he would be a top guy. Dominic Mysterio has a very, very nice move set. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that, but he actually does have a really good move set. Yeah, but he's got to learn how to do them better. <laughs> I, I agree. Good. I agree. But like, and he's in the shadow of. I mean, one not of the greatest. Taz, Taz, Taz is Hook's dad, but they're so vastly different. But I feel like when you put Dominic in the ring with his dad, it reminds you of how he is not his dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a Hook is infinitely removed from Taz. There's no oh, so yeah. you almost don't even know their son and father. There's I'm sure there's some people that don't know that their son and now, father. Now, if you put Hook in a fucking singlet and buzzed his head and gave him a really really good tan and tried to make him be taz 2.0 everyone would be going who the fuck is this kid yeah mm -hmm. um 
Yeah, I I I, I agree. I, mean, I can't stand Dominic. He like I said, he's not. He's only being rushed so he can have a run with his father right now. Yeah, the only reason why he's on the main roster. Which, I love Ray, but I mean, Dominic, man. You gotta guy. admit too, in my opinion, Dominic is doing moves, wrestling moves that are significantly harder than anything Hook does. Hook just kind of goes yeah. out and brawls like, and he's just know. doing judo throws. Yeah, they, they look flashy, but they're not hard to ex. I, I do agree. I think Dominic is executing high, more high level moves. Hook and Rana's Hook, Hook is doing judo tosses. Uh, Hook how is many, doing a uh, Ronda Rousey type moves. How many six <laughs> foot three dudes do we know that can go out there and do a Hurricane and Rana? Yeah, not many. That's a tough move. And six yeah. one nines. I mean, and as Dominic, as time goes on, I th- hopefully Dominic gets better. I agree. Uh, he's not. He's obviously not there. He doesn't. He's about to wrestle WrestleMania. I'd like to see him go to NXT. Like once, if Ray retires, have him go to NXT 2.0. It wouldn't hurt him. Have him go to the gym. (laughs) (laughs) Get some definition where you don't have to wear that body suit. I'm sorry, Dominic. Either get muscle or get or fat. That's the two. That's the two wrestling body builds you can have. You can be skinny. You just better be ripped. You right. be ripped or fat. What are the two, dude? The other thing I can't stand is when he, Dominic's carrying his father down to the ring on his back. What the <laughs> hell is that? You don't oh. give your dad piggyback rods? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I've ever done that. <laughs> That's how we enter Thanksgiving dinner in my house. <laughs> Come on, Dad, jump on. It's time for the turkey. <laughs> yeah, at, le- at least at least Hook isn't carried around Taz on his back. I would rather him doing what he's doing than, than That's do that. True. That's true. At least he's not packing Taz down to the ring. I wanted to like I wanted to like pack Taz on his back like that and like Taz take off his like old school shitty Oakleys and like put him on a hook. Like it's so Could you imagine Tony Khan going to Taz and saying, Hey, listen. I want you to come down to the ring with Hook, and he's going to carry you on his back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'd go over great. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think Hook is uh, – He, I kind of agree with what – I do see that he's a, a little overrated. Like, when you talk about the fan reactions, I'm like – I, I see the overrated thing, but there's also a point. Uh, there's a part of me that's like, dude, if they're reacting to him, the litmus test is the is the crowd. So if the crowd is even if he's doing the most basic dumb bullshit as far as character work, if the crowd's popping for him, who who are we to say he's underrated or he's overrated? Because I mean, they're fucking reacting to it. It makes me wonder if AEW could put out something right now because the fans are so excited to have something else that's not WWE. If they'll react pretty positively to most things right now, well, that's what that's what... they couldn't. They couldn't trot Brandy Rhodes down to the ring and get her <laughs> no, over. No, no that's, <laughs> that's different. Other people that won't get over there. It's just you know, it, it's fun. And if it, look at look at Keith Lee in WWE, the fans went nuts for him when he came to the main roster and. When they wasted him, the fans just didn't care anymore. And that same thing would happen to Hook if they got tired of him. That's yeah, I, that's my point. They will get tired of him unless something changes. Yeah, I don't think you, evolve. Keep you just can't keep it the same. I just don't see what's so exciting about him, I guess. Like, I don't get where the hype is coming from. Other I than the test, I think the test, too, is going to be when they put him in his first feud, when he yes. gets into a feud. I know he's not had a feud. He's been basically, unless that thing with QT or whatever, but there's not really been a few to test him. He's just kind of been doing squash matches and getting over. Well, and I think fans are, I, I, Daniel Bryan always said it. Wrestling fans are fickle. If you keep giving us the same thing over and over, they will turn on you. So I'm, I'm very interested to see like now we are in stage one of hook. Like what's going to be that next step evolution in his character. Like, because if you just keep doing what you're doing now, eventually that shit will wear out. So it's going to be the next step that's really going to determine, okay, is this kid under or overrated for me? I really haven't heard anyone say anything positive about him other than Chad saying that he's hot. <laughs> he's hot as hell, dude. <laughs> yeah, I've heard Chad say great things about him. <laughs> Good looking kid. I'm just envious of the guy's hair, man. I'm yeah, just envious, I'm of, envious of anybody's hair at this point. So. <sighs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I feel better now. Look at that luscious bring, mop. Bring out those locks. I wouldn't even be wearing a hat if I had that hair. 
<laughs> All right, guys. Well, we're going to move to our final topic yeah. of the evening. Yeah, let's do All it. All right, let's go. Our final topic. <clears throat> Should Stone Cold return for a match at WrestleMania? What a question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We don't know what Stone Cold we're going to get. Like, he's always said he's had another year run left in him. At least he said that a couple years ago. Yeah, it was like three years now ago. Now it's 19 years since he's been in a ring. So does he still have a year run left in him? Does he have one match left in him? He always said he didn't want to come back for one match unless there was a reason for it and it was going to bring something. So I don't know what the purpose is here or what they're thinking, but they had to do something to convince him if he actually comes back. Cause we don't know officially that he is coming back. Maybe he got the ring in his backyard and he went out there, took some bumps and he's like, damn, I can't do this anymore. We don't, we really have no clue yet. But, um, should, but if he does, should he, if he's in ring shape and he could do what he used to do, I don't have a problem with it. If it's going to lead to something, if it, is it going to elevate Kevin Owens? Is it, is it going to lead to something else? Like, then I don't mind it, but if it's what just if it's, what if it's one there. mania match, he's not coming back for a run. It's one and done mania match. Should he come back? Well, I mean, I'd rather see him than uh, uh, what uh, Johnny Knoxville or friggin' Logan Paul. Hell yeah, I'd pick him over that any day. I mean, yeah, but I mean, here's the thing with Johnny Knox. Do I like those celebrities? I mean, Johnny Knoxville's fine. Do I want to see him at mania? No, but dude, that's fucking mania. Cindy yeah. Lopper, like they've Pete been Rose. doing, they've been trotting out celebrities on Mania. Cindy Lopper didn't years. wrestle; she was just a part of it. Well, and they've yeah. been heavily playing into the, uh, the Jerry the King Lawler. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm having a blank. Who was the celebrity? Andy Kaufman, right? Like, even right. Knoxville's even dressing up like Kaufman, and like, yeah, like, I kind of like that angle with it. But yeah, I'm tired of like Bad Bunny and yeah, uh, yeah. I don't machine, like that shit. Apparently, like Machine story. Gun Kelly is going to be in the new video game, which is weird. Like, yeah. I think with Stone Cold coming back, I mean, there's a whole side to this argument where I, I could go off on a tangent about how they need to build new stars and they need to quit relying on the past. Yeah, that's all fine and good. But the fact of the matter is, you pull out a Bill Goldberg. You pull out a stone cold, you pull out the rock people tune in for that shit. So I get that side of it. So I'm not even going to tap into the whole, you, you need to build the youth. That's, that's a given. That's not what this is about. To me, I don't have a problem with old vets coming back for those one-off matches and having, you know, adding some flair and flavor to a mania, getting people to buy in. I don't have a problem with like those dudes coming back for matches, but I do have a problem with stone cold coming back. It's oh, like, no, he's, really? he, he's different to me. He's a different guy. He's not. I think he's the biggest wrestler in WWE history for me more, more than Hogan, more than any, like, I think he, he was the fucking man. Hogan put it on a national level and Stone Cold blew it through the roof. Like, he was the guy at the time. Plus, with, like, just his demeanor and the way he's always said, like, I'm done. Like, even in that quote that you were talking about, Tom, where he said, you know, I got I got another match in me. If you listen to him, that whole quote, he goes on to say, yeah, I could do it, but I'm not going to do it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and there's something that fits the attitude and the tone of a stone cold Steve Austin. He says what he means and he means what he says. And if he's just coming back, like what's it going to add to his legacy? One, it's probably going to be for a big payday, which I get it, man. He's going to get money fine, but there's something about stone cold Steve Austin. It's like, I want to remember him as walking out of mania after the rock pinned him he goes out on his shield to his greatest rival and he walks off into the sunset, never to be seen inside the ropes again. There's something like poetic about that. There's something that makes his story powerful in that way. And we saw what happened with Shawn Michaels. That's what I was the dude, the dude went out in a retirement match against undertaker at mania in an awesome match. 
And it was one of the great ways to go out. And he, they tried to lure him back with an AJ Styles match. And he was interviewed and he said, I don't want to come back for a match like that because my career ha is, has a perfect beginning, middle, and end. And I bookended it in the perfect way. And then a couple years later, they got that Saudi money and he came crawling out for that Saudi payday. And the match was absolute fucking dog shit. And you can say, oh, he's st his career is still, he's still a legend. It didn't sully his career. Fine, yeah, I still love what he did. I don't think it affected what he did. But there is a fucking stain at the end of his career where he came out way past his prime and put on a shit performance. And the last thing I want to see is Stone Cold Steve Austin deep into his 50s, come back almost 20 years later and put on a fucking turd and then there's that turd at the end of his career. I don't want to see that. So I want Stone Cold to stay the fuck out, stay the fuck away. But here, here's the difference between Stone Cold and Shawn Michaels. Stone Cold, what Shawn Michaels work was a way different style than what Stone Cold Steve Austin work. And for order for Stone Cold to come back, he doesn't have to do what Shawn Michaels did. That's true. You no, know, he comes through. He stomps a mud hole. He does a Luthez press. You know, it's a much different style. Like, honestly, like, Shawn Michaels at this point, he should come back and fight AJ Styles to make up for that shit match and have a better ending again. But he, but he comes back for Kevin Owens because Kevin Owens talks shit about Texas, so he's got to so come he, back. If he's like, doing it, I guarantee there's going to be more to this story that's going to lead to something bigger, bigger, whether it's for Stone Cold or for somebody else to elevate something else in his company. I love Kevin Owens, but I'm sorry if. Stone Cold Steve Austin comes out of a 20 year almost retirement to face Kevin Owens. Why? Who gives a shit? What's That's, the story? I mean, Stone Cold's not coming back to do a who gives a shit. He, he's going to find a reason to make it look good. Yeah. I what just feel like, like that. What do you think, Frames? I think, I think the another big difference between Shawn Michaels and Stone Cold is that Shawn, or Stone Cold retired when he was 38 years old. Not because he wanted to necessarily either. He just, very true. He was he's busted up. He's busted up bad, and I feel like he probably feels like something was taken away from him, maybe. And yeah. I feel like if Stone Cold wants to do this, I feel like he should be able to. I've seen that. Like we've seen him, right? Like we, he looks like he stayed in really good shape. He looks good. This whole time. He looks he good. Looks good. And like, uh, like he, like. Uh, like he was saying, like they work different. Him and Shawn Michaels work different. Stone Cold's a brawler, right? Uh, that's very. Was, true. He's that's gonna go in there, brawl it up. Yeah, do some Luthez presses, uh, do some stunners, drink some beer, raise some fingers. Like <laughs> the crowd's gonna pop. I think you'll pop, Chad. Whenever oh, you see I, it. I, dude, I'm not saying he comes out, puts on a fucking great match. He's vintage Stone Cold. I'm gonna be popping. I'm gonna have my Austin 316 shirt on. I'm gonna be loving it. Yeah. But it's the fear <laughs> to me. It's it's not even I, it's not that I think he's going to put on a bad match like Shawn Michaels did. It's more of the fear of it not being a meaningful return. Like any return is a meaningful return with Stone Cold. I feel like uh, yeah, because, yeah, because yeah. it's been 19 years and he was in his late 30s. We're yeah. not far from the age Stone Cold was whenever he retired. That was taken away from him. Any return is fucking magic in my mind. Like yeah. I can't think of like a I, I, better ending. Like all this shit, this career was taken from him. Yeah, when he comes out come and he's got his fifty-year-old uh, man boobs kind of sagging he, down. As long he's, as he's, he's not a, a shell of himself. As long as he's not a t-shirt wrestler. Yeah, if he comes out looking like Sting did, <laughs> like <laughs> at WrestleMania. Sorry, yeah. that's fucked up. But like, I'm a huge Sting fan, and like, I'm like, oh man, he's like balding and like. He didn't have that look like hand going. Yeah, he had like that weird dent in his chest. I'm like, all right, I guess that's the thing I wanted to see. And then yeah. again, he got also got squashed by Triple H. Like, not squashed. Yeah, me but... and Steve call it the nipple ripple. Yeah, it's when they're <laughs> <packed. Nipple ripple. laughs> they, have, they have that ripple in their nipple that Ric Flair and Hogan know, Hogan have. Uh, Jericho has it now too. Yeah, Jericho's yeah. got the nipple. Ripple. I mean, look at Jericho's in ring work. Who cares? <clears throat> And listen, I, I just don't think Stone Cold's coming back if he feels he's going to be any sort of an embarrassment to what he was. I have that much faith that if he believes he could do it, it's the only way he's coming back. You know, my biggest fear is, is that the WWE, like we were talking about earlier, is so sanitized that he's not going to be able to go out there and chug beer and flip off the crowd. Oh, God. Uh, I don't think he'd do it. No. You know, when he comes back. 
there yeah, what, are they a, fi- what are they gonna do fire them <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly you can't do that i mean that's that's him you know like and i feel like the two guys that return and pretty much have their run about the place is him and the rock yeah yeah you don't think Stone mean, Cold told Vince, "Hey, man, if you think I'm not coming out and giving the middle finger, then I ain't doing it." Because- I'm more worried, more worried about the beer, but he could probably arrange that somehow. Even if they tell him you can't drink beer, you can't flip him off, he's gonna have a cooler. He's gonna have somebody there yeah. tossing him uh, broken skull IPAs, and he's gonna be yeah. pounding. He's not gonna listen to Vince. But even when he comes back for like raw appearances, he does the beer. Yes, like he, he always does. does. Okay. True, 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 true. He did it at Madison Square Garden right before the pandemic. Things they're started. not. You can't take that away from him. There's you can't be, take that. There's gonna be one uh, thing I mean, missing. Be a stone cold figure with some little beer bottles in it. <laughs> beer cans. There's gonna be one thing missing that what? is gonna bum me out. The one thing missing. It's it's gonna be Jim Ross not being there. Yeah, with the Stone Cold return. Stone Cold, Stone yeah, Could you imagine if Jim Ross was able to announce that? that you match, think that return? This is just playing fantasy. But I got show bumps think thinking Vince about. Would oh, yeah. out to see if they could get, or or Stone Cold would say to Vince, "Let's get Jim Ross for this one match." The only way I would think that that could possibly happen would be if Stone Cold called Tony Khan. Because Stone Cold had Tony Khan on his podcast. They got a Tony long Khan is a big, big Stone Cold fan. Tony Khan let Jericho go on Stone Cold's podcast. All because of Stone Cold. Right. He said it wasn't about WWE. He has so much respect for Steve Austin that he allowed Chris Jericho to go on the Broken Skull on the WWE Network. So I think that would only happen if Stone Cold requested it. And the funny thing is, there is a precedent to that. I mean, he wasn't working for AEW at the time, but when uh, when Taker put on that match that was supposed to be his final match, uh, he requested Jim Ross for that match. Yeah, remember Jr. wasn't yeah. commentating, and he came out <clears throat> and did that Taker match. It was awesome. It was at a Mania. And um, the flashback where they did even after AEW started, they invited Jr. back, but he didn't do it because he felt it was a conflict of interest. You're 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 spot on with that frames because like. Stone Cold without Jr. It doesn't feel right. I don't want to. I don't want to see Michael Cole do his best. Jr. Stone Cold. Stone. That you gotta have Jim. I hear him say "Vintage Stone Cold Steve Austin." I might puke in my mouth. Oh God. What do you, you think? What do you think, Sneed? You've heard us. We well, haven't heard you. Here's the thing. I think. I, do I want to see him come back? Absolutely. Of course, I want to see Stone Cold come back at Mania and do a and have a match. I'm just I'm I'm with you in the fact that I'm after the after the Shawn Michaels thing I'm just nervous I don't want that to be because I don't want that to be the thing that I remember about stuff like, and it's not going to be the one thing that I remember but I don't want that to be part of the memory if it comes out comes out and it's bad I don't yeah. want that to be the thing but I mean again I don't think he's going to do it if he doesn't think he can do it. I'm with so, Tom on that. I'm with Tom on that. I think if there's anybody to trust how to gauge if he's if he can do it or not, it's Stone Cold. I don't think he's going to say he can and bull, he's he's not a bullshitter. He's if he thinks he can do it, I believe that he can do it. And do I want to see it? Yeah. So, I I think that he should do it if he's able to do it, if he thinks he can do it, I think he should do a match at WrestleMania. And I don't know how you guys feel, but I know everyone's like, oh, you come back for the Saudi money. You can't come back for the mania paycheck. Stone Cold don't have to come back for shit. No, that dude's got money money flowing. He doesn't have to work another day in his life and he's set for life. He's got a ranch in Nevada. His money flows like a Steve (laughs) Weiser. That's why I say if he does it, he's coming back for a reason and it's going to mean something. It's not going to be, I just hope it's the one off the map. It's going to be something behind it. The story's got to mean something. And and we're getting so close. We're we're like 30 some days out from Mania. Are we going to have him before Mania? Or like, is this going to be something that ha- are they going to build anything you have with to. him? Yeah, but just about what is a little then they need a to, Well, then they need to get on the fucking ball then. Yeah, it's like 30 some days they before need to get, Mania. Yeah, they need to get on the ball with it. I agree. Because if you're going to hype it up, you have to do it now. I mean, if you're going to have him come out and do classic Stone Cold promos to build the match. And you can't just have him come out at Mania. And then I think it's, then I think it kind of loses something. Yeah. It does. Trying to sell tickets. They better do it soon because 
they're bound to buy one, get one free to sell that place out. So if they need to sell tickets, you better put Steve Austin's name up there now. Are they BOGO in WrestleMania right now? Yep. So I, I want to bite off of uh, our our show uh, hosted by Young Anthony, J Bone, and MVP on the Raw Down. They have a thing called the Steve Meter, <laughs> and it's every week they give the percentage of what if of what they think the possibility of Stone Cold actually showing up at Mania. So if you had to pick a percentage, zero being none. 100% you think he's going to be there. What's your percentage, everybody, on Will Stone Cold wrestle, not show up? Because I think he's showing up 100% because it's Dallas, Texas. But what's your percentage on him actually having a wrestling match at Mania this year on the Steve meter? I'm going to go like 40% because there's been no signs or proof of that he's going to do it yet. What do you think, Freems? Going at sixty percent, I think there has been slight signs with the Kevin Owens um, shitting on Texas thing. Sneed seventy five. Damn, you think you're that? I think seventy five. It happens, man. Wow, Sneed has put this ahead of where he put wow. CM Punk returning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think there's more of a chance. I oh, think, wow. I think twenty percent. He he shows. I uh, mean, Chad, on he shows body. or that he wrestles. That he re- that he wrestles. Okay. Um, I I will say his social media has been teasing me because he's been posting cheat meal like his not cheat meals. He's been posting his uh, uh, what do you call it? Meal prep. You, meal preps. He's so he's he's getting his body. He's eating a certain way. He has a nutritionist, a dietitian, setting him up. So that makes me think like he's wanting to get his body right. So the, maybe the, the ring that he had installed makes me think that he's got something planned. Now, is that a fact? He Did he announce he had a ring installed? How did that come out? I don't remember how it came out. I just remember reading it somewhere. Yeah, because I don't know if it was a dirt sheet thing or if he posted a picture of it. I know sure. he's been posting videos like walking down his driveway from his big warehouse gym. That's uh, like off on the property. And I'm like, is he really just pumping iron in there? Or is he taking some fucking bumps and hitting the ropes? Wow. Oh shit. So hot spots went to stone cold's ranch to sign autographs and they posted pictures in his new wrestling ring. Oh uh, shit. Okay. okay I, I just bumped up to 50%. <laughs> yes, I just bumped up. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, just at least up. this Chad, you probably don't even know this with that Shawn Michaels return. Yeah, he came out with a figure to commemorate it—a bald Shawn Michaels action figure. Uh, yeah, I, I, I remember everybody was shitting on that figure because it looked horrifying. It looked like Nick Gage. Yeah, it <laughs> he did. did look like Nick, Nick Gage. Gage's first wrestling figure. Well, man, it was a good man. Anybody was, got yeah. anything else to say? That's it, man. This was fun. This yeah, was it was real fun. fun. Frames, you got to come back on, man. Tell That's everybody man. where they can find you, like on social media or Twitch. Um, yeah, twitch.tv slash freems on Twitch and uh, freems TTV. For and that's freems with a Z on Twitter. F R E E M Z. Yeah. All right. Dude, we got to have you back on. Yeah. We got to make this a regular thing. Yeah, sooner rather than later. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was, uh, it was, it was real fun. Yeah, you uh, can get back on anytime, man. Open invitation. You always have a seat here at the tavern. <laughs> All right. Appreciate it. Well, that's going to wrap us up for this week on the Turnbuckle Debate. Make sure you guys are following the TurnbuckleTavern.com for all your tavern needs. Tom, get your shit in real quick. Hurry. Turnbuckle sessions every Friday. Me and Mike Belcaster. No G Fit Kid on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, well, you got him in quick tonight. Yeah, he's quick. Yeah. Court is dismissed.